Bring us in, babe. Welcome to Coco, Coco Caliente. Caliente. Yeah. What another full beautiful week. What another full. What another <laughs> full. What another full. Another. What another blessed day. And mm-hmm. as I'm looking to my right, what what am I looking at, babe? The flowers you got me. The flowers I got you. Yeah. And why and why did I get you flowers? Because I'm sick. Can you tell my voice? I think I sound pretty good now. I, I was really sick do, for the whole week. You do sound good. And what else did I get you with those flowers? He got me um t- a twelve gourmet dipped chocolate dipped strawberries. So chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And why do I do these things? I think so. That way, I clean the house and make you dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think I have an ulterior motive behind no, getting I... you flowers? How often? Okay, let, let me say this. Mm-hmm. How often do I get you flowers? Like really often. You like think... every other week. You think every other week? Yeah. I don't know. I don't put a. I don't ever want to expect it. So I'm not like okay. This is his pattern. I don't think you have a pattern. But I think you know when it's like I need them most, they show up. <laughs> He's always, when I'm like hanging by a strand, it's like, oh, look what's here. And I actually, the reason I waited so long to get you more flowers is because you just had that tea party not too long ago and you had a bunch of flowers in the house. And so I kind of had to wait for them to die to get you more flowers. And I was never the type that was like, I was like, oh, girls who like flowers. Like, but. Getting them for no reason, I think I like the gesture more than the flowers, if that makes sense. If you sent me, you know, a shake or mm-hmm. like even a cute little picture. I send you a, a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> but like, I think I like the gesture. I think it's really cute. But I don't like you spending all of our wedding money on flowers <laughs> and like $36 strawberries. So, yeah. Did you look up yes, to see? Yes, I how, did. You looked up to see how much because the strawberries were? Because we're supposed were? to be saving money. Well, don't worry about that. That's why I don't like having an mm-hmm. Amazon account that you can hop into and see how much things are. And actually... Did you look at it or did you get your mom to look on her thing to see how much they were? My mom saw it. Yeah. See, I don't like sharing our Amazon. Whatever. No, it is what it is. No, the reason is because she was like, why did you order this or whatever? So you knew it was coming before it no, got here? No, because then she covered it up. She goes, oh, Tiffany, Tiffany ordered those. Uh, and like I didn't think about you ordering. You've never gotten me. I've never gotten them my whole life. Yeah. So I was so oblivious, thank goodness. And then I got the I got flowers and I got that at the same time. But no, I wasn't expecting strawberries. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I I like doing it because it's such an easy thing for me to do mm-hmm. that causes such a great impact on you. Yeah, it makes me in a better mood. I cleaned the whole house and I made him his favorite dinner afterwards. <laughs> I feel like it's like a win-win. But yeah, but that's not my intention no. when I do it. But it, it's awesome because, and I don't think, like, for example, it's easy for a guy to think like, oh, like, it's just flowers, right? It's not a big deal. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so I'm here. And the reason I brought that up is to give the guys a leg up, right? Or the guys that don't know that the flowers, like, all right, it might be 30 something, 40 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. But that is honestly nothing to what, you know, your significant other feels. Yeah. And the reaction you get from getting that and like the love you put into that person after you receive those. And my favorite thing is, is that you write me the cutest personalized <laughs> notes. And like sometimes they're like from a different person that's not even you. Yeah. And it's like cute and thoughtful. And I think it's just. Let, let's clarify that. I have an alter uh, yeah, per he, ego personality. His name is Vincent. And sometimes. He's goofy. Yeah. He's goofy and, and he's very funny. And, and so sometimes I will do things in that person and and so i, I can, love vincent more than yeah. i love victor i think because i could say i could say you know no th- those flowers were vincent's ideas and, and the strawberries were vincent's ideas and, <laughs> yeah. and vincent got you those things and so you know that that's it's that's funny. awesome of him and anyway mm-hmm. that it, it's just something we do sometimes it's from me sometimes it's from vincent but and i think it's just knowing that you are thinking about me i guess you know because we're both so busy with mm-hmm. life and, and you, I've been away, right? So, yeah. it, it, so you don't even know they're coming. I'm not at home, right? right? So they just and you won't show even up. come home for several days after sometimes. Yeah. So, and I won't even get to talk to you, or you know, I don't know. Whatever so, it is, yeah. And so, it's cute. the reason I brought that up is mm-hmm. because if you're a girl listening right now and you're like, "Oh, my guy never gets me flowers," right? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe he doesn't know. You know, you, you can't, you can't yeah. put the, you can't just automatically say, right, that's not the guy, my dreams or he's not doing everything he can. Well, maybe if you put it out there, it might happen more often. And maybe if you put it out there, it won't happen next week. No, because then that's too soon, right? You just said it, 
right? And then you'll be expecting How it. did you know I like flower? Like that I like this just by my reaction you get from me getting? Actually, flowers? no. It was because I never did this before, right? The only person I ever sent flowers to was once in a blue moon was to my mom mm-hmm. when I lived like in California and she lived, you know, yeah. in Louisiana. And I was like, oh, it's Mother's Day, mm-hmm. right? Like very, like, what do you get your mom for Mother's Day? Right. And so like I, I got her flowers. And then I stopped doing it because I never sent flowers to anybody. And I remember when I moved here and like your mom would get flowers or something mm-hmm. or because your dad doesn't do it often either. No, like, my mom gives my dad a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> and so and then you would say, oh, I would love to get flowers. Oh, I love flowers. And then, then I was like, I well, do love flowers, but man. I like love wild flowers. But now I love all flowers. Yeah. And that's why. And then well, also the guy kind of has to know the person as well, because you're not a big fan of roses. You know what I mean? Like if I just get you a whole bouquet of roses, you'd be like, oh, that's nice, but that's not my style, right? Yeah, I like, if you like have, it like, looks like you just went in a ditch and you picked them all. <laughs> but like if there was a couple of roses mixed in with a bunch of wildflowers, yeah. yeah, that looks nice. Like mm-hmm. that has a couple of roses in yeah. it, the one that we're looking at right now, but there's other stuff. Anyway, I'm just giving advice to mm-hmm. women and men that may be listening or the woman that can tell her man like, hey, you know, a little act, a little random acts of kindness, like fly. And it doesn't even have to be flowers. It can be anything. Yeah. Because I think what I do for you is like, I'll do something like make your favorite food or cook or clean or do. That's kind of how I show my You know what I think is so sexy? You know, one of the most sexy things I think that, that you do for me. Oh gosh! When you wash the bed sheets, oh, I did put, do that and you for put, you too. And when you put new bed sheets on the bed, and I can mm-hmm. go to bed, and I come home, and the bed sheets are brand spanking clean, mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, that really gets me going. I'm like, oh man, the bed sheets are clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! It's something so simple, no, yeah. you know. But no, but it, I do wash them for you because yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I'll like sleep in the same sheets for like three, four months. Which it's not I an don't issue. Think is healthy, but, but it's just me <laughs> and you. It's not like, <laughs> anyways. I don't yeah. sweat when I sleep. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. But you barely now that you don't come, sweat, it's just scary. No. <laughs> but yeah. if I don't sweat or stink, but yeah. if you, uh, well, since you've been in my life, I've learned washing the sheets is normal. Mm-hmm. Like every couple weeks, I do yeah. for you. No, and I, and I really do appreciate that. But it's like little things like that. So if your significant other doesn't know or they're just oblivious, because a lot of times guys aren't mean. We're not intentionally mean. Nine times out of ten, we're just oblivious to the fact of the things that we think are normal or like you just have to tell us to do something. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we don't take the initiative to just do something. But then there's a fine line to tread because some guys like me – don't like being told what to do. Yeah, I don't tell you to do this stuff and you do it. So yeah. whatever whatever we have is working really well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> well, it's love and affection and everything that we have in between that mm-hmm. because we really care for each other. We do. I'm shedding a tear. Not really, but emotionally inside I'm shedding a tear because yeah. we do have something special. So uh, one of my favorite companies ever is called Function of Beauty, and it's a shampoo and conditioner company where you get to literally make your own shampoo and conditioner. It's so awesome. It's I brilliant. love it so much. It's, it's, it was the best idea ever. I know. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of it. Yeah. But it's kind of makes you think, yeah, we all don't have the same hair, so why are we all buying the same shampoo and conditioner and expecting the results we want? Literally, like most drugstore brands, they only address like a single hair concern like volumize or color protection. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, you have to like choose between one or the other, which makes Function of Beauty more awesome because you can literally have like five hair goals in your formula. Yeah, you do. You get to pick five. You get to pick the colors. You get to pick the scents. And if you don't want, if you want dye free, if you want unscented, that's a complete option. There's literally 54 trillion possible combinations that you can make. So they have everything on the spectrum for you. And it's 100% vegan and cruelty free, which. That's only things that I buy nowadays. So anyways, and it's the internet's number one rated customizable hair care brand. 26,000 five-star customer reviews and counting. My results are great. I, I have the color protectant right now. It's the purple shampoo. 
Love it. Victor has his own formula. How do you feel? I know. It's great. I love the smell. I mean, smell. you have no hair I right now, I love the though. feel. <laughs> I know, but it's still great. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I use it even though I have little hair. That, mm-hmm. goes to tell, that goes to show you how much I like it. And what's awesome is our listeners receive 20, 20% off of their first order. And to redeem, go to Function of Beauty dot com slash coco and take their hair quiz go to function of beauty.com slash coco to get 20 percent off your custom formula you'll love it um but us aside right? we have a really cool guest that everybody has been wanting to hear from we yes. have nicole anthony america's favorite house guest of season 21 not you victor you're I know. you're can, so season 18 can you say can you say we also have america okay so i am podcasting with Two America's favorite house yes. guests. And there has only been, what uh, I don't know what season they started this favorite house guest thing. There's not a lot of you. Oh. Wow. So now I'm nervous. You are podcasting with two of America's favorite. I'm just kind of curious on sometimes how they come up with the favorite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not do regarding not, Nicole. Do not <laughs> discredit. Not, not even you. There's just some that I'm oh, just like. okay. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Anyways. Anyways, we really hope you guys yeah. enjoy this interview. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Woo. All right. We got Nicole on the line. So, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? How, how's, how's, how is life, Nicole? <laughs> and it's weird because oh. Nicole is, I have my Nicole, right? That's sitting across from me. And so I am calling you Nicole. Nicole's are cool. So Nicole's, yeah, <laughs> you I really got, are, right? <laughs> We're the best. <laughs> so I guess Nicole's are pretty cool. So how's life? How's, how's everything treating you right now? Oh my gosh, life is insane. Like I said, I lead a small life. I'm used to just living on my island and working. And post BV, it has just been a whirlwind of fans and love and support and podcasts. And it's, it's overwhelming, but it's so much fun. Yeah. So, okay. So now that that's your high, mm-hmm. right? You are, you're, you're on cloud nine right now. Let's dial it back. Let's go back before Nicole was on Big Brother, before any of this happened. Who, like, who were you? What were you doing? Oh my gosh. I w- okay. The way I, I said it a couple of times, like in the house, I was very stuck and that's nothing against, you know, my life or my family or my place of work, but I just felt very like stuck in the mold of like what I was just doing. Like, like my sisters like went to college. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do that. And mm-hmm. then my sisters went into the workforce and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do that. And I always felt like the different one, like the one that wanted something different or wanted something bigger or I don't know. I always felt like the black sheep of my family. So I'm like, oh, this is something I really want to do, but it's weird. It's uncomfortable. It's out of the norm. And I'm like, you know what? It's happening. I'm going to do it. <laughs> to, like ending up on like uh, going on the show. Is that what you mean? Yes, absolutely. Like I, my thing was I wanted like an experience, mm-hmm. an adventure. And like I wanted to get myself out of where I was stuck, get myself out of the comfort zone yeah. and meet new people and people that I wouldn't approach in my normal life, people that I wouldn't encounter mm-hmm. and just force myself into an uncomfortable position. Because you are a preschool teacher, right? Is that what you were yes. doing? Yes. Okay. And so how was the process of getting on Big Brother? Was this your first year applying? This was actually my second year. I oh, okay. sent in I sent in a video last year and I was more so like, you know, like business Nicole as if it was like a resume. Oh. So I was like I was just like stating facts yeah. and then I realized like that's not really my personality. That's more so like a job interview. Mm-hmm. So this year I submitted a video with more of my personality and, you know, my jokes and whatnot and my quirkiness mm-hmm. <laughs> and it paid off and I was oh it was so exciting when I got the call. Yeah, no, that's super exciting. And then so, oh, so it was, a, you sent in a video as well. That's what I did. I didn't do, yes. you didn't do an open casting call. No, I sent in a video. Okay. Yeah. And so let's say, let's say, let's say you didn't get on Big Brother. So you would, okay. you would just be, you're the preschool teacher. That That's what you were doing. And you felt like you were kind of stuck in a row. Would you have just stayed doing that? Is that what you're still doing now? Um, I was kind of like wondering in regard to like my degree, because I actually went to school for secondary education English. So my dream is to, you know, be like a high school English teacher or like a professor. Yeah. So I just kind of like landed at the preschool and I absolutely love it. But I just kind of like landed there Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, my gosh, which master's degree do I want? Do I want English? Do I want special education? Do I want literacy? So I was kind of like assessing the different master's degrees 
And I'm like, I don't know which one I want. I didn't even know myself. Like, I don't know who I am, what I am. And I'm like, oh, I wish Big Brother would just work out and I can do that <laughs> first and then figure out and then figure out what I want. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how things work out, isn't it? Because I, when, when I applied the first time to Big Brother, I didn't get picked, but I was kind of hoping because I had just graduated college and I was like, man, it would be mm-hmm. so perfect if it just happened right now and mm-hmm. I didn't have anything else going on, but that wasn't the case. What, what, what did your family think while you were going through this process, even just like the first time, right? When you didn't get picked, what, what was their thoughts on it? So the first time it was a lot of like, okay, Nick, all right. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. You do that. We'll see what happens. And especially this year, like when I, I showed my sister the video and she was like, damn, that's really good. And I'm like, see, I'm telling you, I'm like, it's going to happen. I always said to them, like, if I'm applying, I'm getting cast. Yeah. Like that was always my thought process. Like I never thought of it as, you know, throw it to the wind. Like, oh, I'll just, I'll just apply. Like I saw it as this is happening and this is how I'm going to make it happen. So the more I spoke about it with my family, the more they were like, damn, she's not going to let up. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> and where are you from? Uh, you know, pardon my ignorance, but where are you from originally? And, and I love the accent. So I feel like you're somewhere from the east, uh, yes, northeast. I am- <laughs> I am born and raised Long Island, New York. Long, Long Island. Long, <laughs> Long Island, Island, New York. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and were you a super fan of, of the game? Yes. Okay. So I, I'm afraid to use the word super fan. Yeah, because me too. Those people, because of like, the Twitter live feed stuff. Like, yeah. yeah because I, was, I they used the word. rambling off. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, this person was evicted by a vote of this to this. And, and I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I'm not that kind of a fan. So I, I call myself a mega fan. Oh, like, I know, there we go. Yeah, I know all the people that have been on. Like, I've been watching since season 10. Okay. So I know all the people that have mm-hmm. been on. I, like, obsess over it when it's on. I'm always, like, on Joker's updates. Refresh, refresh. Like, trying to figure out who won everything. Yeah. So, yes, I've been a mega, mega fan for, like, the past decade. And so how did it feel walking into the house the first time, you know, you love this game. You're ready to play. You kind of look around. I feel like I was kind of cast as the same person you were i feel like there's different yes, personas i could see that and i like kind of looked around and i mean i know how i felt so i'm curious how did how did you feel like going in with these big personalities and you know i mean i maybe i'm a little more timid than you but yeah just tell us how you uh, felt I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well when i first walked in you know it's very surreal and it's so mm-hmm. exciting and then like you, know, you meet everybody this is cool but and it's horrible to say, but like, as I'm meeting everybody, you know, I'm, I, I met Kat and then I met mm-hmm. Kemi and I'm, and I th- guess it's just instinctual in humans. Like I was comparing myself yeah. and yep. I was like, oh my gosh, these women are in these beautiful dresses mm-hmm. with their makeup done and their high heels. And I'm in flats with my hair down, no makeup and quirky. Mm-hmm. And that was like one of my biggest battles. Like the first couple of weeks was I would just see how people interacted and what they spoke about and Mm -hmm. how they carried themselves. And they, all the girls would be doing their makeup. And I had such um, insecurities about myself. I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm not like any of these people. Yeah. That's kind of how I felt too. And we both were not um, in the eight person Alliance on my season 16. I was, (laughs) I was not with the in crowd originally. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. Like I felt, I also didn't like put even cover up all over on my face. I didn't even know that was a thing. It was like still trying to learn about the ways. And so I felt kind of intimidated, but then guess what? I think we did the same thing. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. We embraced who the heck we were and made the best out of this situation. And I'm like, Hey, I'm the only quirky one here. Like, let's rock this. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) I remember two like distinct moments when I felt that way. And one was when I thought I was going to go home Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? Who gives a crap? If I'm going to go home anyway, why am (laughs) I trying to like suppress my quirk? Uh And then the (laughs) second one was like, you know, everybody wanted to play like never have i ever and i was like nope and i left the room and i was picking on myself for it and i was like oh why am i not like them why am i not being true to myself and answering the questions why am i not playing it Mm -hmm. and then i was like actually that is me being myself because the real nicole doesn't want to do that you know so i realized a lot like oh i am i am being true to myself and i I can embrace the fact that i'm awkward and quirky you know So we all know how important it is to really eat healthy, but in reality, nine of 10 people don't get enough fruits and veggies, and I am guilty of that. I hate- And I'm a vegetarian, and I'm even guilty of it because I can only consume so much. Exactly. I'm I'm really not the best uh, with veggies. So Nicole and I, we came across your super, Um, and so basically- 
there was uh, Michael and Crystal, and uh, as a professional tennis player, they were very happy, healthy, and active, and then Michael was diagnosed with cancer. And then Crystal started making superfood mix to help him rebuild his immune system. And then it really, really started working. Michael's health got better and better. And they knew they needed to share you know, that with the world. And that's where we're at today. And it's not only great for you, but they also, it's just a great company. I love that your super is a transparent supply chain. I know they know the farmers. I want to know what I'm putting into my body, especially when something's claiming to be healthy, right? So that feels, uh, makes me feel better. Also, your super is uh, B Corp certified, the highest standard for social corporate responsibility committed to a bigger mission. For every mix you buy, they donate a life-saving food bar to someone in need. Yeah, so superfood really is the way to go. And they have uh, recipes online that they're free and it's very easy to add to your daily meals. And it just really helps you build that immune system, build a better body and be more healthy. And uh, right now you can get 15% off your order when you use the code COCO at checkout. Get the cleanest superfood and plant protein mixes at YourSuper.com. That's Y-O-U-R Super.com to get 15% off your order when you use code COCO. Just go to YourSuper.com and don't forget to get 15% off with promo code COCO, C-O-C-O at checkout. Did it get more comfortable with you um, not seeing the cameraman and... And okay, so I felt kind of awkward the bathing suit photos. I'll be honest, because I'm oh, not like gosh, super yeah. comfortable in the bathing suit. It's not something I like yeah, put and, heels on and do. Mm. But so that day was kind of like I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna make it in here. And then yeah, that was. <laughs> but the camera men around were kind of like I was scared. But then I got used to it because there was no camera. So I just thought, okay, I'm just living in a house. I th- I would say I got better and better as like the summer went on, like when it mm-hmm. first started out, and we did like swimsuits. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so like embarrassed. Like you said, like <laughs> I don't prance around in my bathing suit. Like, this is so awkward. Like this is so weird. I don't do this on a normal basis. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think to be honest, like as the people started dwindling, so like yes, there's no cameras, and then there's fewer and fewer people mm-hmm. in the house. So you become more like comfortable. Okay, this is yeah. me. But definitely in the beginning, oh my gosh, like that first day when everybody was in their bikini, it's like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, like it's crazy, like how comfortable. I mean, it's great. I mean, it was just, it was like everyone celebrating and already working on their social game. And I'm like, oh my God, I just want a towel, please. Can I please yep, just put absolutely. a towel on and go well, in? <laughs> mind you, uh, babe, we actually did that fake naked photo shoot oh, too my God. which is even oh, right. more uncomfortable because it's like oh my gosh i would have died <laughs> i basically wore a one piece so they had to like i pretty much had like a lot covered which was good i had a uh, i essentially had to roll up my swim trunks into a g-string everyone looks naked in that photo <laughs> and hold a yeah hold a pillow over myself yeah i wasn't naked oh my but gosh my 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 bathing suit was in my buttocks uh, <laughs> yeah. really well well. Oh, thank God they didn't have us do that. America <laughs> would have never met Nicole because I would have died. <laughs> uh, and while you were playing the show, did you kind of get the feeling of, hey, like I have a chance of not only winning this thing, but being America's favorite house guest? Oh, wow. So, in the okay, so like I said, I said to my family, if I'm applying, I'm getting cast. Mm-hmm. And if I'm getting cast, I'm winning because that's my mentality. If I go into something, I go into it yeah, expecting if, like if the 100%. If you don't have that mentality, shame yeah. on you. You know yeah. what I exactly. mean? Exactly. Like, you can't go into something and be like, meh, I'll give like 30% see what happens. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? mm-hmm. Like you have to go into something and say, I'm going to give 100 and I'm going to make it to the end. So that was always my mentality. Like no matter what, I'm making it to the end. Mm-hmm. With America's Favorite, I had zero idea. I used to always talk you know, to my house guests about it, especially Cliff. And I'd be like, I just want to be somewhat notable or somewhat remembered Mm -hmm. like i don't want you know a couple seasons from now people to be like oh wait who's that one girl she was a little weird (laughs) (laughs) you know especially because like my name's nicole i'm like Mm -hmm. oh forget it it's never gonna happen (laughs) oh was there like nobody's gonna remember me (laughs) so i was not not expecting it at all to be america's favorite and were you trying to be america's favorite no, that, that's the thing. Like, I would think, like, when people brought it up or when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, that'll probably be, like, you know, Cliff or Tommy or Sam because I, view I viewed my house guests as, like, a fan. Mm-hmm. So, I'm like, oh, probably, like, one of them. 
but I never looked at myself that way. Like, I'm just Nicole playing the game. I like, think I never... that's the best. That... It's the best when someone's not trying to play a certain yeah. role. It's just like they get it for who they are. And I can definitely see that's who you are because I watched the first interviews um, with Jeff before the season yeah. started. And I had tweeted that I'm Team Nicole. And, well, I was like, thought it was cool. You had the same name. And they saved your interview for last and it just like I saw it so much quirky and you know realness, genuine yeah. realness fun in your interview. I was like, oh hell yeah! So I just oh, thank you so I much. think I just knew from the beginning. I just never felt like you were gonna go home. And even oh, when you thanks. were on the block at the beginning, I was like, something's gonna work out because I just felt like you needed to be there. You had like a message to share, and you weren't you were not going to be remembered as like going out early. So I think it's really oh, wow. cool that like your journey turned out to be so beautiful. Yeah, and Oh, thank you so much. And back to the uh, the America's favorite stuff cuz I felt the same way for my season that there was people in the house that were actively trying to yes. be America's favorite. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, well, that's just ridiculous, right? Like, why? And it would get annoying. It would be to the point where I was like, oh, that's like what the redundancy of what you're doing. But anyway, <laughs> it's when, too when, much. Yeah, no, it's I got too you. much. And then it got, and that, but I never thought that me, myself, I mean, if you, if you saw the, vi- you know, the, the finale video, which yes. uh, I was just so surprised. I was like, no way. Like, me? <laughs> Me? Really? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I it's very I'm... like it's very surreal. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it's because super, you yeah. learn what everyone thinks about you in ten seconds. Mm-hmm. Like they yes. call out you're just out of the house. You have no idea, no interaction with the outside world, and you just kind of look around at your castmates, and they're going to name the top three names, and you're like, okay, well, if I'm in that, that'd be like remarkable. Okay, oh my god, I'm in the top three, and then when they say your name, yeah. you're just like, oh my gosh, how and that finale exciting. was such a. It was such a roller coaster because yes. obviously I'm locked away in the house mm-hmm. and I come out mm-hmm. and I hear all this controversy mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there going, oh my God, wow, we're all hated. This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then America's favorite. I'm like, oh wait, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not as hated. Like I was like, what's happening? <laughs> well, and that's the thing, the best. So if you're not going to win, that's the next best thing to get. Just because it's like, all right, well, at least I'm out and I'm liked. Because there's some people that yeah. don't win and then are just disliked. Yeah, and yeah. So that, it's a tough. It's, it's tough. yeah, you're 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 walking a tight line, especially just being on a on a on a reality TV show in general, being exposed to the public, and maybe not your finest hour sometimes because you are being recorded 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Yep, ma- makes it nerve wracking. So was that something when you were coming into the house? Did you even think about that? Like, oh my god, I'm going to be recorded 24 hours a day i don't want to say something that maybe i shouldn't or do something like did that make you nervous a little bit um i would say like as an educator that's something that you always have to be mindful of anyway Mm -hmm. because like you know in the classroom you don't bring up politics you don't bring up religion you don't bring up you know your opinions about certain things and also as an educator you know acceptance and diversity you know so those are things that i've already i mean i had them instilled in me like growing up just, you know, from my parents. And then but also, work, you'd be mindful you know, of yeah, it at work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you become mindful of it so much, like, in the school setting. So that setting, I was like, yeah, this is what you do. You don't say things that are going to come back to bite you. <laughs> yeah. And I think it never... Think, I think I wasn't worried about ever saying something wrong because I just... You just kind of know if that's something you have to worry about on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. But yeah. I was more worried about being caught like naked somehow, like the shower yes. door comes oh open. My God. I was like, I'm going to shower with my bathing <laughs> suit on. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> the amount of towels I piled like over the shower doors were ridiculous. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, how do you get away from that? If something accidentally, you know, leaked on the internet, someone opened the door, I was... I yeah. was very afraid of that more so than like what I would say, I guess. So, oh no, same. And I slept in layers so that nothing would pop out while I was sleeping. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that, hey, I didn't think about that. That's very true. That could be really, really bad. Fall is finally here, and I am so excited. That is literally your favorite season. It is. I have to say that's every episode. She's like, oh my God, we have to decorate, Vic. We have to do garland, and we got to do this, that, and the third. And I'm like, ah. He's done nothing. No. Well, another cool thing is that means people need cool looking pants because it's starting to get a little colder. So, Beta brand is. 
That's right. I pronounced it correctly, right? Yeah. Beta Brand. Yeah. Because I have, sometimes I say the wrong name. So <laughs> Beta Brand is a cool place where you can get stylish, comfortable work attire that feels like yoga pants, but looks like dress pants. Yes, they do. They look really professional, actually, and, and they're very comfortable. They're your yoga pant, dress pant, right? Yeah, and so you can get different colors from black, khaki, brown. You can get um, seasonal styles, whatever you want. They're skinny cropped. There's premium denim. There's wide leg. They have ones with faux pockets, with real pockets. So if you need to put your phone and stuff in your pockets, there you go. Yoga pants with pockets, and they look professional. If you are interested and trying out Beta Brand's pants, you can get 20% off at betabrand.com slash coco. Don't wait. See for yourself. Millions of women agree that these are the most comfortable dress pants ever. Go to betabrand.com slash coco for 20% off. That's B-E-T-A-B-R-A-N-D dot com slash coco. So, so Nicole going into, were you, were you in any type of relationship or talking or seeing anybody before you went into the Big Brother house? Nope. <laughs> no. Okay. So now, now that you Uh-oh. have, let's just say now that you have a little bit of fame, because I don't, I don't call anybody that comes out of Big Brother a celebrity, right? Because we, you just kind of get some fame, but I would consider us like Z listers in in the realm yeah. and spectrum of. Well, we're celebrities. more humble about it, but I mean, she's very popular. She's considered mm-hmm. right now a list celebrity. Okay, but <laughs> but you know what I mean, though, right? In the, <laughs> Thank you. In the grand scheme yeah, yeah, of yeah, things, right? We're yeah. not. No, we're not, I hear you. We're, we're not, not Hollywood, Beyonce. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. But now you do have some fans, right? You do have fans. You get off the show, and, and there's other things that I want to get into about that. But ha- has there been guys hitting you up, sliding into your DMs now? And, and like, what is your what is your guy type? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So I don't understand how DMs work. So that's still being um, <laughs> that's still being investigated. But yeah, I've had like um, guys here and there, and it's very. I'm I'm surprised. I'm awkward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, oh. <laughs> things make me really nervous. And I don't know. It's it's a very odd. It's very odd. I don't know. I don't like it. You mean when they're like, <laughs> if they try to hit on you and stuff? Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So now that you say that, so let's say if you had a perfect scenario to meet a guy, because if things like that make you awkward, what would be that perfect scenario, that perfect happenstance situation where you like touch hands with somebody that went to go grab for the same book type of deal? Like what would be that scenario for you? Yeah, I feel like that's on the Big Brother application as well. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I guess I'm more like, I don't, I don't want it to be somebody that like comes up to me and is like, hey, I'm really attracted to you. Let's just date. Like, I, I'm not like that. Uh-huh. I'd rather be somebody that like is slowly integrated into my life and we're mm-hmm. friends first mm-hmm. and then it just kind of like develops. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm more like it has to be genuine and develop from something. It can't just be, hey, hit me up. You know what I mean? So you're the, so you're the gal that you work with a guy for like three years and then like after a while, you know, he just so happens to like have an extra piece of cake and he gives you the extra <laughs> oh piece gosh. of cake. <laughs> and so then detailed. it's like, oh man, that was a really good piece of cake. And he's like, oh, I'll make you a cake. And then <laughs> it says like, you know, let, you know, let's go out on a date. So something like that, something more like, over time, like I've known this guy for a while, and it's like, oh, I've grown yeah. to like him. I think him. that's a, that's like a really good thing. Yeah, I think Nicole grew to like me. Yeah, it so, took about Aww. took it took two years. Yeah, it did. It took. It took oh, that's so sweet. I love you guys. Wow. <laughs> it took a while. Yeah, yeah. It, he was very persistent, but I do like persistence, and maybe that's what you need, Nicole. Someone that's just like persistently there, not like in your face, but just hey, yeah. I'm there when you need me, you know, and. Yeah, um, just that's a good way to put it. Like, just always there, and then it develops. It's not like right up on you all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's like not the dating apps that are out now. Like, okay, let me try this guy today. I'll try this guy tomorrow. Yeah, what I'll go on a date this maybe, guy. No. And it's like, oh, oh my God, God. no. I, I can't even go. If going on a first date would make my armpit sweat Ugh. so bad, I'd rather just I, like be I'm single. I'm sweating right now with these <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, we, can get, we can get into some questions. I'll <laughs> no. tell you what. No, like, there's no stress <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. But I do, I do have another question for you. I don't know what his sure. questions are either, Nicole. So she, I'm just, I'm is, on the edge of my seat too. Oh God! <laughs> I got I, your back. I have both Nicoles on for the ride here. <laughs> so you, you don't seem like a very big social media person from beforehand, right? So no, that, that, I had none. No social you, media. You had no social media I at all. I love that. Did you nothing? Have, not even a Facebook. 
Nope. You had nothing. <laughs> Where? Okay. I had not a zilch. Nothing. Zip. SpongeBob SquarePants. Patrick under a rock. That's that's where <laughs> yep. you were before. Okay. So yes. Now you you have Instagram and you have Twitter and you have people that like love and adore you. How how does that feel? like? What is that like to go from literally zero to one hundred in an instant? Oh, to to be honest, like, obviously I love everybody that's loving and supporting me, mm-hmm. but. It's, I will, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's very, very difficult. Like I said, mm-hmm. I live a small life. I never had social media. Zingbot made fun of me for not having a lot of friends. <laughs> so, like, mm-hmm. I have moments where I'm like, this is awesome. I love the attention. I love all these people. And then I, at the same time, I have moments where I'm like, this is too much. I need to turn this off mm-hmm. and not look at it. Like, it's very overwhelming. And I know it's stupid, but that's just me. No, it's not um, stupid. It's very, and I also, very real. Yeah, and I yeah. also feel bad because, like, I... I have OCD. I want to like, you know, respond to everybody, but you can't respond to everybody. Mm -hmm. So then I don't want to respond to anybody. So, and then people are like, oh, you're not responding. And I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. I don't want people to hate me. So it's, it's a very Mm -hmm. weird emotion. No, it's very relatable. Like for anybody coming off of the show, whether it's love or whether it's hate somebody, you always want to respond, but it's kind of like, I get what you're saying. Respond to, I'm the same way on my post. It's like, do I have a couple hours to respond to everyone or am I just going <laughs> to yeah. not respond? Because then people will be like, well, what's wrong with me? Why did she respond to her? Exactly. But not to me. And it's like, it's not you. I promise. I, you know, all important. And then I feel big because I have all these followers and like, mm-hmm. I, like I just got social media, so I'm not really mm-hmm. sure how to work it. I don't post much. I don't really take selfies and stuff of myself all the time. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, all these people are following me and want to hear what I'm doing with my life. But I'm not posting enough, and then I feel so guilty. Oh, it's it's horrible. <laughs> no, I, I, we've we've all. I, I mean, we were all in the same boat at some point, right? We've all gone through those cycles. Even if we had social media before, we weren't nearly as active as we were after. Yeah. You know, we we had that attention. So yeah, we we understand where you're coming from. And then my approach after a long time was like, I'm just not responding to anybody. I don't know if that's the yeah. best approach, but it works for me. And I'm actually trying to get to the point where you were before Big Brother. He wants no <laughs> He wants no social media um, because he's just very small. He just wants the people that's in his life. That's like the opinions yeah. he cares about. Not that he doesn't love his fans and supporters. He does. But it's just there's some people out there that will the, they ruin it for the yes, lot let's just yes, say they ruin yes. it for the lot and, and absolutely when yep. that happens for me i'd be like well the opinions that actually matter would be that of nicole mom dad you know best friend yep. type deal and so absolutely. yeah that that's kind of how how i i and I can see what you're saying because it's like one of my biggest fears. I'm like, I don't want like my mom and dad and sisters and the important people in my life. Not that fans aren't important, but the people that I mm-hmm. know face to face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I don't want them like smothered and suffocated by this cloud of, you know, people. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. So that that's something that I, I've really been trying to work on. But it, it's bittersweet, like you said, because there are the people out there that really genuinely care and want you to do well. Oh, and you're like, man, I, I don't want to let them down. Either. It's a lot of yeah. pre- it's a lot of pressure. It feels like, especially I don't know what it feels like to be America's favorite house guest. You two do, but I can only imagine <laughs> oh. it adds to the pressure because they love you so yeah. much and they want to they all they want to see what you're doing. But then it's, it's only been not that long since you've been off the show. So even if you took you know a month to figure out, okay, this is kind of how I want to run my media or this is what I want to share. This is what I don't want to share. Don't ever feel pressured into sharing something you don't want to share. It's been, Mm -hmm. I've been off the show the first time for five years and I'm just now sharing some, I've been very private in my media, but now I'm trying to open up a little bit because I'm like, okay, I'm kind of comfortable with it now. I can handle the haters now. I mean, even though you have a lot of love, I'm sure there's still some people that are going to try to like, Oh yeah, they're out there. Yeah, <laughs> they're mixed what, in there. <laughs> so it's just like it's all I can tell you is just have the support of your family. You have so much support out here, but just like really remember what's important when you're reading nice comments, Absolutely. mean comments, or whatever. So yeah, no, it's so true. And that, and again, like I just want to articulate, like I, I'm so appreciative to the yeah. fans, and I love them mm-hmm. all so yep. much. But it's yep. just it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah, sure. you'll you'll get you'll get a handle of it. So I know Nicole's really open about her anxiety and, and how she deals with that. And, uh, and everybody has 
something that they're going through and they might not want to share it, you know, with everyone. You know, it's something that's very private. And that's why there's BetterHelp. So BetterHelp is an online environment that helps you connect with professional counselors in a safe and private online space. And it's so convenient. They have 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states and they cover depression, stress, relationships, sleeping, anxiety, grief, self-esteem. They can communicate via text, chat, phone, and video, and you can start communicating in under 24 hours. And everything you share is confidential. And if you're not happy with the counselor for any reason, you you can request a new one for no additional charge. And they also have it available on your desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. So also, financial aid is available for those who qualify. Best of all... With us, our code, Coco Caliente listeners, can get 10% off your first month with discount code COCO. That's C-O-C-O. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash COCO. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs. Get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash COCO. And I do want to ask because only once a year can I ask this question because only people that do Big Brother find themselves in this unique position. So going from zero, let's not say zero, let's little stimulus for <laughs> 90 some odd days, right? Very little stimulus. So then coming out yes. of the Big Brother house and so uh, the people that don't know or don't watch the show and if you do watch the show and you want to know what happens afterwards, you get out of the show and you're on stage and then you do the press junkets out in the backyard. And so you have like press, 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 press. And then you walk into the after party, uh, the rap party, and then it's just a flood of people Mm -hmm. trying to talk to you and take pictures with you. And then after that, which lasts a couple hours and you get your... So how did you do dealing with all that stimulus all at once? Because for me, it was kind of crazy. I reveled in it for a little bit, but then I couldn't sleep for like 48 hours and I had to actually take some sleep medicine to go to sleep and I wasn't right for like the next few days. So how did you handle that? So walking out of the house, you know, you're kind of like adrenaline. You're like, oh my gosh, so exciting. So like the finale, I'm like, this is great. And then the press outside, I'm like, this is great. And then the after party, Mm-hmm. I kind of got stuck in the doorway. I never actually got to food and drinks or my castmates. Mm-hmm. Um, I got stuck in the doorway, and it was great to meet everybody. But mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, wow, this is a lot of people, and I, I want to see my cast. I want to sit down for a second. Okay, this is not – and then it was just a lot. And mm-hmm. then, you know, I, I went to my hotel. I'm like, all right, that was all right. I'm okay. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the next day we had, like, you know, like – a party like the cast and like yeah. band party yep. and i was like i don't know that's not really my speed but i'll go i want to see my cast and i'm not gonna lie that was extremely extremely overwhelming for yeah me again you didn't get to talk just, to your cast really because it's just a bunch yeah. of people trying to take pictures with you and pull you every which way and direction mm-hmm. yep yep like i couldn't wait. i'm like oh i could finally get to talk to ovi i could finally get to talk to Kemi. like mm-hmm. i was you know looking forward to it and it was just a revolving door of people and I didn't mind it. Like I love taking pictures with fans and talking to them. But at one point, like I exited the VIP area cause I'm stupid. <laughs> and I was in like a group of fans and they just all started grabbing at me and it was, it was horrifying. <laughs> and I, uh, needless to say, I went back to my hotel and I was like, okay, not going to Vegas. Nicole needs to go home and just be Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to Vegas either, either time. I've Neither never did been. I. You yeah. didn't, Vic? No, oh, I did not wow. go to Vegas. No. I just knew it would be, I wanted to see my family and I just wanted yep, to be absolutely. like submerged in what I knew in the comfort of like, I guess my house. But Vegas isn't my thing, whether I guess I'm on a show or off a show. Maybe that's why. Maybe if it was like camping, a camping trip, <laughs> <laughs> I would do oh. that. <laughs> But but yeah, I noticed you didn't go, but a lot of other people I think did. But you yes. were just kind of like, eh, I just want to get back to my normal routine. Yeah, my my deciding factor was the fact that, like my dad didn't come to the finale. Oh, okay. Because he was watching the house and the dogs, and I'm like, I just want to see my dad. Aww. Like I just want to see the dogs. I want to see my dad. I want to lay in my own bed, you know, and just like mm-hmm. take it all in. And even that was like a shock. Like when I got home, I was so, surprisingly so emotional just to see my house. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's so hard to explain, but like to walk into your own house for the first time in a hundred days and see windows and light switches. It's very odd. 
Yeah, no, it, it is. It, it's weird to drive again or do anything oh, yeah. like small like that. You're like, <laughs> oh, I can write. I can, I can yeah. buy oh my, my own gosh, food. Yes, writing. <laughs> yes, it's like, oh my gosh. So N- Nicole had a, my Nicole had an interesting question for you, which I, I was interested in as well. What is it? Uh, the one you told me was you voted for oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holly. Mm-hmm. And actually, Nicole, yes. take it away with this question. Okay, so no, if you were, say, got out a little bit sooner and you were at the jury round table, and would you, what would you have said to the castmates to kind of um, advocate yeah, yeah, like for Holly's game? Would there, would there have been something, would you have fought for her game there or... Yeah, I'll admit, like throughout the like the earlier <clears throat> the earlier weeks, I was like, "Yep, Mickey. If if he gets to mm-hmm. the end, and I'm in jury, that's who I'm voting for. He's a beast. He's won everything. He's kept himself safe week after week after week. Mm-hmm. This is very impressive." And that final week, when I was just with the two of them, I sat down with Holly more, and I'll admit it, like Holly's somebody that I kind of dismissed throughout the game, and I kind of was like, "Yeah, okay, she's with Mickey, mm-hmm. or she's not that smart." Like, I can beat her in a mental comp. Mm -hmm. And sitting outside with her, she spoke to me a lot about her strategy and how it was, you know, she's like, it was my idea to come in and, you know, lay low and just Mm -hmm. have a good social game and not win things until the end and not not show my mental strength until it came to be at the end. And that's exactly what she did. Like, she blew me out of the water in a mental comp, completely shocked me, um, did very well in physical comps, she was right behind Mickey in that first part of the HOH. Mm -hmm. So the more she was talking to me about like, you know, oh, I came in slow moving. I developed relationships. Um, I made sure that like Mickey was in check, but I also stayed behind him in case someone did come after us. Mm -hmm. Like the way she described her whole game, I gave major kudos because I was like, wow, I never realized it. And I never gave her credit for it. Mm -hmm. And this is something that should be like, like applauded like it was very impressive and it's kind of like similar to my game you know i was quieter playing the social game and i'm like if i expect people to respect my game her should be respected as well so had i gone to like the jury round table Mm -hmm. i would have voiced what she told me and i would have told people her strategy and how there was a lot more going on than any of us gave her credit for yeah like you don't just have to be loud and win comps to be a you know a big brother champion you can absolutely and do you think that's one of the reasons why she didn't win is because she wasn't able to get that out there beforehand while people maybe were going out. But I guess yep. it, it might not have helped her game at that time, you know, but at the same time, nobody knew. So they didn't have that information to go off of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would honestly say had I gone out prior to like the final three and spoken to her, I would have voted for Mickey as well, to be yeah. completely honest. Yeah. So. I was sitting there when, you know, the two of them were having like their final like pleas and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, come on, Holly, where's that explanation that you gave me outside that day? Where is Mm. that explanation of what your strategy was and how you implemented it and how you laid low and how you are a mental beast and you are really smart and you held that back and you played stupid. And I was waiting for her to tell Mm -hmm. that story like she did to me and she didn't. And I was like, oh, none of these people have any idea the great game you played. Yeah. And who would you have wanted to sit next to in the final two? Um, in general or of the three of us? Of the three of you. Oh, of the three of us, I wanted to sit next to Holly, hands down. Yeah. I knew, I felt like if I was sitting next to Mickey, it would be two, like, apples, oranges. Like, oh, he's a comp beast, we'll vote for him. Mm-hmm. I thought next to Holly, I'd be like, oh, again, they didn't know that it was her thought to lay low, and mm-hmm. she's a mental beast. So, I figured they would compare the two of us and go, oh, Nicole had a better social game. I figured I was pretty good with the jury members. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also thought it would it would buy me extra points if I sent Mickey out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I always think back what I've taken. I loved Paul so much. And I felt like James didn't play like a really great game. So I always, I don't even know what I would have done. I'm like glad I wasn't in this situation. You know, like I promised um, Paul and it's like, you promised someone and your heart's telling you to do this and your head's telling you to yep. do this. It's like, yep. what do you do? <laughs> and and that's the thing. Like people, like, you know, obviously you just asked me. I said, oh, I would have taken Holly hands mm-hmm. down. But like I say to people, you don't know. Like, I say that now, but in that moment, mm-hmm. if I did win that final HOH and the two of them came up, I don't know, and gave me a hug yeah. and both of them said something, I might have said, you know what? I do respect the fact that Mickey won so much. I'm going to bring him. And that mm-hmm. could have very well happened. And that goes back to the whole, like, you know, Tommy or Holly debate. And I'm like, right. you can't say what Tommy would have done had he stayed in the house. He can speculate, but you never know until you're actually in that moment. Yeah. Was it really hard for you to convince Cliff that... 
he, Mickey or Jackson, Victor likes when I call him Jackson, he gets confused. Yeah. When, when Jackson. <laughs> I call him Mickey. <laughs> okay. When Jackson, okay. Mickey, whatever, um, was doing that whole thing, saying that he was going to take Cliff over Holly. You always knew better, right? Oh, absolutely. And then Cliff, because- did Cliff really believe that he was going to take him over his showmance? I I think so. You know, Cliff always said to me, you know, he's a Southern gentleman. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be from the South. When you shake a man's hand one on one and you look him in the eye, you mean what you say. Mm -hmm. And I said to Cliff, like my my big joke that I tell everybody is I'm from New York and we'll stab you while shaking your hand. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. so I'm like, I'm like, Cliff, I I'm not buying it. Like, it's a game. Mm -hmm. All it is is a handshake and eye contact. Like That really means nothing. Do you really think he's going to take you over his showman? I highly doubt this. And showman's aside, they worked alongside each other. They were very close. They were allies. They were loyal. So I that was the most infuriating thing for me was being like, Cliff, like, Mm -hmm. if you have faith in it, I will have faith with you. But I highly, highly doubt it. Because really, even if you wanted to vote out Holly, then Cliff would have voted out Tommy and then Jackson would have had the swing vote or the yes. head of household vote to vote out. So then you would have been in even more trouble. So it was kind of like, yeah, get Cliff on board or just like go along with it and hope that exactly. it works out. That, that's tough. And that's what, that's what it was. Like we were, we were both like teetering in the middle because Cliff and I in that moment were like, ah, oh, we both want to get to final three. What's our best option to get there together? Mm-hmm. And we just kept on comparing notes and comparing notes and, which one's better? We could probably beat Holly and we'll have, we'll do this. And like, you know, Cliff made the deal for Holly to throw the HOH and surprisingly she did. It. So it was just like a series of events that mm-hmm. were very confusing and crazy. And then all of a sudden it was final three, like final five to final three was a whirlwind. Went so fast. And you won the double so eviction fast. HOH, which was amazing. I don't even yes. know. How, you're just like, oh my gosh, that's the best HOH to win because you're just like, all right. I'm, I'm safe. I don't yeah, really. Yeah, that's the scariest one to go through. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never had to go through it. Like I did. No, her. I mean, oh, yeah, she just she, yeah. <laughs> she went yeah. through it like yeah. in the best possible way. Absolutely. That was oh my god. That was so. I just wanted to win something, and then mm-hmm. it was like the perfect time to win it. It was so exciting, mm-hmm. and that was at a point where there was three duos all pointing guns at each other, and I was like, I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm putting up a duo. <laughs> so, what does the future look like for you now? Like, what's What's uh, what's Nicole up to now? Yeah. What 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 does she plan in her future? This is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny. I'm actually like right now. I'm trying to like get everything in order because I you know I'm being reached out to about a lot of like podcasts and events mm-hmm. and possible like you know things that I could be hosting or whatnot like in the future. Mm-hmm. And I'm like that's tremendous. So I'm trying to like get all my little duckies in a row. Right. But it's so hard because there's so many little duckies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but I think right now I'm just um, I'm trying to take it easy. I'm, I've been staying at home a lot, and That's good. Yeah. I'm excited to like visit the preschool. I'm going to visit all my coworkers and the kitties and whatnot. But mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to like adventure and change, and maybe looking into other jobs or looking into like mentorships or something like that. So cool. yeah, yeah. So some. Some new big things. Yeah, that's yes, absolutely. That's one of the things that's good about you know that people may I guess people notice it or maybe don't notice is the doors that may open up you know post the show. It doesn't necessarily happen for everybody, but for those that it happens to, if you capitalize on those and take advantage of it, it definitely can take you down another road in life. And so, and always stay true to yourself. You can always stay true to yourself doing exactly. it. It's just some people, absolutely. some people don't. Some people change who they are to try to make it. To they think it might make it better, but really, yep. you are where you are because of who you are. Not yes. oh, they don't want you. you to change. Yeah, you don't they have don't... to move to California. I think I you're mean, all right where you're but at. But if, if you wanted to, I mean, you could. But I'm saying <laughs> you don't have to change what you look like, what you're wearing, what you're saying. They love you for you, and that's kind of how I always lived my life. Is like I got to where I am because of where I came from who I yeah. am, not needing to change for other people. So I think as long as you stay true to that, you will be A-OK. And I got some questions from the listeners, if that's cool. Sure. Um, Absolutely. If, if there's a season in the past, you is there a season in the past you feel like you would have been good on or wanted to play on? What would it be? Which season? Ooh. Wow, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I know. I thought I was I like, guess, I mean, this is interesting. <laughs> I guess like in in general, just like, um, because a lot 
as you guys know, obviously, living in that house is the mm -hmm. dynamic between the people and all yeah. the downtime yeah. and the social interactions. Mm -hmm. So I would actually say, like, your season with Derek and, you know... 16? Like, I... Yeah, I would say season 16 because, yeah. I mean, I, obviously I wasn't in the house, but I feel as though was there was the a very... It um, yeah. Yeah, was I good. feel like it was a very good dynamic. Not saying I would have won against any of you, but I think it was a very good dynamic, a very healthy, mm -hmm. calm, friendly, classy dynamic, yeah. and I would have liked to be a part of that. Yeah, it was really it was really good. That was a really good season. I, I call it, like, summer camp, and then 18 was, like... Some type of torture. <laughs> it was no, but it was complete opposite, and uh, it was could not have been any more different. Which it is, is so where weird. she met her future. I can see that, husband, but yeah, I didn't meet so. you there, so it's not torture. I was just joking. I am torture. I <laughs> okay, who is your favorite player of all time, and why? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've said this time and time again, and sometimes people get mad at me. My favorite of all time is Paul. That's not a bad <laughs> thing to say at all. Paul's one of our best friends. Yeah, he's a good friend of I, ours. We love Paul. I have well, I have legit pictures in my kitchen of the three of you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's cute. I know that's creepy, but no, as a fan, like, I have a picture of the three of you. Like, I freaking love you guys. And Paul is one of my absolute favorites. I love him in the DR, just how straightforward yeah. and he's like, so smart yeah. too. He's so intelligent. Absolutely. And you guys live kind of close. Yeah, have you talked to I, him? Okay, he tried to call me twice at like the darndest hours. Like the one time <laughs> I was doing a podcast, so I had to hang up on him. Uh -huh. And the other time I was asleep. Oh, and then, okay. and so I felt really bad. I'm like, do I call him? I can't call him. So yes, I'm not you calling can. Him. You can call no, it's him. It's weird. I'll wait for him to call me. <laughs> oh yeah, he's. I we love Paul. Yeah, yeah. We we've met up several times uh, since the show, and yeah, he's he's a good buddy of mine. I I, I love that guy. Um, are you gonna watch your season? Um, not yet. Yeah. I've seen like I've seen clips here and there mm -hmm. of certain things, but. Um, I've seen the finale because that was obviously no DRs. It was just the finale. So that I watched, mm -hmm. but I've tried to watch the beginning of the first episode and I saw a little bit of, like people's DRs and I'm like, this is bizarre. This yeah. is strange. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I kind of held off on it and obviously I don't want to see the bad week and yeah. I don't want to see. Yeah. So I'm kind of like avoiding it. Totally yeah, get sit it. Sit on it. We're, we're, me and Nicole are on the same, but we'll probably watch it, you know, 10, 15 years from now or <laughs> however long, but yeah. we're going to sit on it for a while before we do. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> um, and what is your biggest learning experience throughout all of this? Oh, man. My biggest learning experience is just, like, an internal learning, like, all about myself. Like, mm -hmm. you're in that house, and you guys know this. There's so much downtime. And yes. And you're just, you're forced to think. And, yes, you're forced to think about the game, but there's days when you think about your life, and you think about your past, and you mm -hmm. think about things you've gone through or things that you want to do, things that you haven't done. So I guess, like in the whole experience like i had days where i think about things and be like yeah i i did get through that or i did get through this or yeah like i gave myself a lot more credit for the things i've done um i thought a lot about like the people like i owe things to and i should thank when i get home so it was just a very very therapeutic and very transformative like to learn it like i, I said at finale like i learned so much about myself and it's so I know it sounds so lame, but like I learned to love myself, which is something I've, I haven't said in recent years. No, that's a so great it, thing. That's great. Yeah, it, you learn like to like when you're stuck in the house with only yourself to trust. Like mm -hmm. you learn to trust yourself, and you learn to love yourself, mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, would you play again? I feel like I know this answer. The answer is absolutely yes, <laughs> yeah. even though Nicole five or six weeks ago is going to like jump through a time warp and smack me because <laughs> it's like I say it's like childbirth when you're in it. It's like, this is horrible. I hate this. I hate them all. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then when you get out of it, you're like, that was tremendous. I loved mm -hmm. it. I want to do it again. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Woo. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would love to see you play again. That, you are very fun oh, to wow. watch this season. And oh, thank you so much. Victor, we're going to go into the weird or normal segment. So, Nicole, every week we have something we th say is either weird or normal. But can okay. you explain this segment? I suck at this. No, that, that's all it is. So okay. it, it's a topic that or a thing that you do or that somebody does. <laughs> like last week was peeing in the shower, but we're not going to go that extreme with you this week. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's something like that. And then you either say that's weird or that's normal and you give your explanation and reasoning why and when you do it. So take it away, babe. Okay, so okay. Um, mismatched socks. 
Is that oh, weird? that's normal. Okay, me too. No, I say see, it's normal too. One hundred percent. That's okay. You Completely know, normal. When I hear that, I think lazy. No. Right? No. Okay. So here's the thing: if you get a rash on one arm, does your other arm get the rash? Okay. No. That is your arms are separate. Nicole, you know what I'm trying to say? So that is if you put totally sock, if you irrelevant. Put a, if you put a sock on one foot, does it have to match the other foot? No. They're separate feet. They have minds of their own. They can do their own thing. You know. True. I agree. <laughs> okay. See, I do not take one. I don't think that argument is valid. It I don't is. think a rash on your you, arm has anything to do with then, the sock listen, that you put on your feet. You keep the other two socks and then you wear them the next day. This way you're not wasting or you're not making one of each pair dirty. You know so what I mean? you know what I think is the problem. <laughs> and I think the argument that you guys make is based on this. When you wash socks, you don't feel like putting the socks back together. <laughs> and therefore, it makes it easier to make an argument like, oh, well, Mitch Mac socks are okay, opposed to saying, I'm too lazy to put my socks back together. It's not lazy. And therefore, they're it's mismatched. It's not lazy. It's creative. When yeah. you open the dryer and you're like, I'm feeling sassy, but mm-hmm. smart today, mm-hmm. then you put on two different socks and feel both ways at once. Yeah. See, there you go. I don't like it. All I know is all my socks are black anyway. Yeah, all of his socks are the freaking so same, so it doesn't the, matter. The irony in that is, for me, it would be... That's the problem. You don't have options. Yeah. No, for me, it would be easy to just go mix-match. Like, it would make more sense for me to do that, but I still match them anyways because some are different brands than others. And so all my socks are... The same, like I, I make sure. So I don't, I don't know. I just feel like that. In a I se- knew Victor would have a strong opinion well, about no, this, because- and I'm glad Nicole does because this makes for a perfect segment. I just feel like it's an excuse for laziness. No, but it's not. I swear, it's not lazy. No, it's a reason for expression. Mm. Okay. and also that my socks ta- get lost sometimes. Exactly. You'll never. Know. That's the. That's the thing. I can always account for all my socks nine times out of ten. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so this way, if one goes missing, you're not like, damn, I need to throw out the other yes. one. You can keep the other one. I Where? keep the other one anyway and then that one becomes a spare sock but i don't do mix match all my socks it's mismatch it's not mix matched mismatch mix yeah. match <laughs> they, they're mixed mix and, and match. matched i yeah. guess i mean maybe i'm wrong i don't know, I don't know. Uh, oh, anyway that's, that, that, that's a good one but i you know we, we i will respectfully well, I, agree to disagree and like, i think i used to get okay. more embarrassed like if i would show up to someone's house and i was in mismatched socks because i would be like oh my gosh i don't know how they feel about it now i wouldn't freaking care but like when you're in high school and you're just like Oh, okay. I'm just going over here, and I got like one red sock on, one blue sock oh, yeah, on. Like you know, you're, yes, in yeah. gym. Or I'm like, <laughs> I always. Or oh my gosh, I think when I was younger, it was more of a big deal, and now I'm like, heck, I don't even look. I don't even care. Well, I know exactly. you don't care Whatever, because whatever's happening, <laughs> we have socks behind our dryer. Shut up, and Vic. that that's that, there's a there's a mismatch there. <laughs> yeah. You know what stinks when there's a hole in your sock? That, Especially when it's by the toes, and like when your toes go through it, oh, yeah. they get thrown. It's so bad. ASAP. Yeah, I don't like what my foot feels like on the bottom of the actual shoe, so I, I like th- have to throw them away. Okay. Yeah. Nick. No, I agree. Okay, Nicole on the phone. Uh, <laughs> I got to distinguish, right? So we're gonna do another little segment. It's called okay. Spanish Word of the Day. Nicole typically does a bad job with this. I've been doing better. She's been doing better. I think I think you'll get this one, but give it a beat to see if I think Nicole will get it because she's pretty smart. I don't know how 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 antiquated are you with the Spanish language? Um, I think pretty well. I took it all throughout high school. Okay. <laughs> so I think I'm ready. So try her. Oh, okay. Then I'm, I'm going to give you... Don't change your word. Don't change your word. I don't know what it is. But... I was going to give I was gonna give two words that make up a phrase or, or, okay. or something, but... Is it uh-oh. America's favorite? I think it's... I think it'll be easy. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 All okay. right. So, hermano grande. Grande means big. It's big brother. Big oh. brother. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, and right? the, I, yes. yeah, and I don't know how they would do it on the title. I don't know if it would be uh, Grande en Mano or en Mano Grande. Good job, Nicole. You know? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, see, that was easy. I wish I would have changed Woo! it. You made me keep it, but good job. Good job. Yeah, now I got it right. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that is really good because I only got. I said one means large, big. big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so en Mano, brother, uh, Grande, big. Cool. Um, so. 
there's that. Good job, guys. Good job. Well, you thank you so team. much for coming on the show, Nicole. We can't wait to meet you in real life. Hopefully, oh, it's okay. under great circumstances, and maybe we're on All Stars or something. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'm just, I'm dreaming. But, anyways, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you. We know your time is valuable. 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 Val- valuable. Valuable. Okay. Yes. That's like the word comfortable. When people say comfortable. <laughs> Nicole. My Nicole says comfortable. Comfortable. Okay. Comfortable. <laughs> uh, comfortable. Whatever. It confuses me. <laughs> yeah, genuine, genuine. I don't anyway. say wine. Yeah, but yeah, I no. love you guys. You're so funny. <laughs> no, thank you. No, we really do appreciate you being on the show. Yes, and, and, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Maybe at some point uh, we can all link up uh, if we're ever in Long Island or by happenstance yes. we end up in the same place. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that interview. That was fun. She yeah. was fun. Yeah, and I just think it's funny that you're both called Nicole. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of. I don't know. Nicole, <laughs> Nicole squared. Nicole squared. Yeah. yeah. Nicole. Nicole. Anyway, October tenth. <laughs> You know what? Do you know what today is in in the world? What today is? What is today? Today is World Mental Health Day. You know what? I actually did know that because I asked my uh, assistant, Rihanna, to add, to figure out when that was. Oh. And it's a whole week. Yeah. There's well, a whole week. Well, the, the What's day the week? itself. Six to the what? I don't know what the week is, oh. but it says uh, World Mental Health Day is observed on October 10th of mm. every year with the overall objective of raising awareness for mental health issues around the world and mobilizing efforts in support of mental health, which is a real thing, right? The more people talk about it, the yeah. better it gets. Okay, so we're gonna have your friend Rodney on to talk about that, and we have actually another cool. We have two guests to talk about mental health. We, coming we do up. need Rodney on. Rodney yeah. Lavoie Jr. He's from Survivor. You guys, will, yeah, no, really seriously, like him. we're gonna start talking about that more on the podcast as well. Mm-hmm. Um, That's something we want to raise awareness for. We think it's important, and we think it's not spoken about enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we really do want to talk about right now is you guys, our listeners, because you guys are the driving force behind everything we do. And without you, there wouldn't be a podcast called Coco Caliente. It would just be me and Nicole talking at the house without microphones. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But no, so we really do appreciate you guys. The reviews that you uh, leave us uh, really... Are the bomb.com. Are the bomb.com. And it not only helps our ego, but it really does help the business side of things. And so we really appreciate you guys so, so much. So Nicole, take it away. This one is so good. This is from, uh, gosh, why am I so bad at saying who they are from? You just got to read it, babe. Lai? Lee? Lee. L-E-I. L-E-I? Lay? Lai? 1994. Episode 31 made me cry. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so freaking hard during the Weirder Normal segment that I was in tears. Was that the pooping segment? Pro- um, episode 31. I don't know. We're on 36. Oh, yeah. that would. Victor that. says a lot of things that my husband says to me, and I always think he's weird, only f- to find out Victor feels the exact same <laughs> way. Nicole's laugh made me laugh even harder to the point where no sound was coming out. Also, as a lover of Big Brother, I could listen to Derek and Nicole talk about BB for hours. Two winners that paved different pathways to the top while remaining kind people. There just aren't there just aren't that many of them. Keep up the good work, Vic and Nick. Aww, That's super sweet. That is very but I think, sweet. So Derek's episode was that a poop episode. So maybe they are talking about that one. Yeah, it has to be. That was so yeah. That was so funny. I like loved listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> I like listen back on it. I'm like, this is hilarious. That was it. it was a good episode. Victor made me edit out the best part. So just imagine what he said. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway. So this uh, this one is from Hyperchick3223. Uh, two, two, three. Highlight of the week, five stars. I love this podcast. Y'all were the first podcast I ever listened to, and it's so hard waiting every week for a new episode. Your relationship is so pure and genuine, and I love listening to you guys grow as a couple. It's so easy to relate to your daily struggles and accomplishments through this crazy thing called life. I just love your weird or normal segments and typically side with Nicole. Woo! You're wrong. No, that's great. Both of your interview skills are on point, and I love how easy the conversation flows with your guests. I'm so glad to be able to follow you both and your journey. We appreciate you so much. Oh, both on your journey. Sorry. Thank you so much. I cannot read. 
But yes, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. We have really cool Coco Caliente sh- shirts being made. Oh, yeah, um, we got a new logo. And we, we haven't shared it logo. with you guys yet, but we got a new logo. And it takes about three weeks for the. We're doing local, so um, it takes about three weeks for them to be done. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited to have something else for you guys to kind of. You know, go to our website <laughs> just and spend. not see the same thing. <laughs> thing is, guys, okay, look, we have a website because we want you guys to be able to access the, especially if you don't have anywhere else to go listen to the podcast, you can just mm-hmm. go to the website, you know, because we have that for you. But it's not really something that we constantly keep up with because we don't have somebody to do that right now. But as we can get new things like we are now, yeah. we'll update the site. So, we hope you guys enjoy that at least mm-hmm. a little bit because we do it for you. We really do. Um, but yes, you guys can rate, review, and subscribe. The easiest way to do it is on that little purple app on your phone. It's a podcast app. Uh, but you can listen to anywhere you listen to podcasts where you're listening right now. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify. You can always go to www.cococalientepodcast.com. You can listen there and you can also check out our merchandise. Don't forget to follow us on at Coco Caliente Pod on Twitter and at Coco Caliente Podcast on Instagram. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you.